Satu Day, what's happening, you guys? This has been a crazy epic week for me. Um, this is probably gonna be feature length this week. Got a lot of stuff to answer. Been tagging a few. Oh, yeah, lots of stuff to show you guys. Uh, all over the place. All right. Let's see. So Monday, if I tagged you in a video on Instagram, it's because my dumbass don't know how to use Instagram, and I was trying to just post a I don't know what that it would be a short but whatever Instagram calls them of this knife and I was just I was literally just messing around so if I sent you that message directly the video directly hey I mean cool but um I wasn't really intended to be so I was talking to Jose about that and he was like yeah you, you probably your inbox is probably blowing up and I was like I think I pretty much duped myself on that one like that's just a mistake my bad so like all in learning processes of get better with technology <clears throat> uh so i think last week we had talked about it briefly um nick behind the edge um he sent this um american blade works uh so i just did a thumb stud mod on it i'm just gonna bring it up close so you guys can see that it's a little thumb stud mod this is a tie connector thumb stud it is placed just behind where it says 20 cv right there in that blade it is a little bit sticking up but very, very little, but it allows just enough room to get in there behind it and flick it out. And I missed it, sorry. Uh, same with the thumb side. This knife to me is super, super small, like this way. So it's hard for me to get my meat hooks behind it where I need to be to flip this thing, but it does work. Um, and I think it's what Nick wanted. I, I had uh, sent him another video of another different thumb stud for an option, and he chose this one instead. So I went ahead and locked it and put this one in there. Uh, the other one I can definitely make mod or mod to make work if he decides he wants a different thumb stud on it. But yeah, now you got three, essentially three deployment moves, the thumb, the finger, and the, and the flipper. So that's generally what I like on my knives. And you can also see that it's kind of behind the path there. I guess you could kind of sort of get it in the path, but you're doing some angular stuff that most people don't do with their knives, I would think. Um, but yep, this one's done for Nick. So I hope you enjoy it, Nick. And if you don't, let me know about them other thumb studs if you end up wanting them. I don't mind like shipping them to you at the same time or whatever. We'll figure that out. We'll talk. Uh, and I'm also going to send you a couple other knives back. <clears throat> so this next one, um, Doug had got a set of scales for me a while back. He'd asked about doing a set and he, he wanted like the dirty style, but that, that first set of the dirty scale that I made, I made two that kind of sort of similar, um, I haven't really been able to duplicate that since, so I don't remember what the hell I did to even do it. But I did something similar to it, <clears throat> and he ended up liking it. He got the scale set for a Satu, and so I, I asked him about the a, a picture for it because everybody that's, that I've sent the scales to, I, I I try to I'm trying to collect pictures of them just so I, I can see that you know they look good and everything works functionally and everything like that. And he sent me a picture of the scale on top of the knife, and I was like, hmm. And he's like, yeah, I hadn't had time to mess with it. And then after a minute, he's like, yeah, the something's up with the the satu that he bought like he didn't obviously he's never had it apart and someone locked out of the crap out of all the hardware well on satus just like xms if you're familiar with xm uh 24s or 18s these are free spinning all these are free spinning they're basically just you know you tighten them from one side and it's friction kind of holds it together so if you lock tight that you gotta have a plan for getting that back off it usually involves heat and that sort of thing so anyway Doug, i finally got your scale put and installed on your saw two now went ahead and did a little action job on it and his blade is a little funky like you can see where someone had cut something out of it and someone had acid washed it and it's kind of got a little bit of a mismatch tone wise and stuff too so uh doug if you decide you want me to do something with this blade instead of just leaving it as is that's fine but if you want to leave it as is that's fine as well um this is your scale on it it's got some fingerprints on it now bad bad but at least you can see now that it's on there and any of you guys that have gotten anything from me if you ever get it and you can't get it installed even if it's you know something from not my fault i don't care just let me know i'll hook it up no problem so hook this up for doug not an issue at all in the process actually before i got the saw to and before i realized that this was an issue with doug um uh he had mentioned actually a while back that he wanted his some work done to his 187 so if you've ever seen the this is the s90 version the s90 the tanto version you ever seen the, the ones that had the the super 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 shiny purple that's what this one was so this is the first iteration that i did to it which is just a heavy stone wash you can still see under this light 
the good heavy purple tones, almost a little sheen to it and some of that light, but I'd stonewashed the shit out of it. So I don't know if you can tell or not, but it was super, super slick before. And now it's got a little bit of traction. It almost feels like a stock Medford to me now because I got a stock stonewashed 187 and I did that with my wife. I said, which one feels slicker? She's like, they feel the same. So I'm like, okay, that's, that's kind of what I, we were dug and was wanting. And that's kind of what I was looking for too. Uh, he initially wanted it um, blasted, and then possibly stonewashed or just blasted. He didn't know. But I think this has a unique enough finish. And you can see the purple highlights, like especially back in here. And then some of these other grooves. And I've already showed Doug this on Instagram. I don't know that he has seen it or not. But uh, Doug, if you see this and you don't like it, let me know. I'll definitely change it for you however you want it. Um, if you do like it, then that's cool. Uh, if you wanted me to send it back for you to check it out and then you make a call, that's fine as well. Uh, we can do something like that. But I did a tuning job on this one as well. Uh, I like this knife a lot. It's a badass Medford. Uh, and also the hardware, if you want to do something with the hardware, I can do that too. Like if you want to darken it. The only thing I can't really do, well, I can do it, but I'd rather not is press this pin out and do something with it and then press it back in. But that's a whole nother ball of wax. Like it's, The hardware is one thing. The blade stop out of a blade, pressing it out, pressing it back in. Every time you do that, the sizes are getting a little, the pin's getting a little smaller, the hole's getting a little bigger or like vice versa. You know, you're getting that friction fit. So it weakens the fit until you have to get a new one. So I'd rather not keep doing that, but if you want that done, we can do it. Um, <clears throat> and also, um, y'all know I've been preaching, well, I'm preaching, I, I, I've been telling, I ain't preaching. I've been telling y'all a lot about the tears, like those Germanos, I dig the Germanos. Um, and I, y'all know that. And the guys that have got them have all appreciated and we're about to go to wave two on that. So if you're in that pass around, I want to be in that pass around, let me know. Um, uh, but anyway, um, I guess Doug had heard me saying something about the Zermanos, and he had got a Zermano harpoon, which I had never even heard of this knife before. So this is another Zermano, an, an older model from what I gather, uh, but maybe he still makes it. I don't know. So this one has the carbon fiber front with a tie liner. You see that blue tie liner, and then the tie on that backside with that blue. Uh, color scheme's not exactly my flavor, but y'all know I'm not really a super like, colorful kind of guy. And even on my Zermano, which I just showed you a minute ago, I blasted all that color off of it. At least that one, anyhow. Um, but when he, I think he said that the action was like not what he wanted or something, and the thumb studs were sharp, and it just didn't fit him. It's not, not what he wanted at all. So I tuned it up as soon as it got here, and I think this thing is absolutely money now. It's a badass knife. I dig the hell out of it. Uh, and the more I have it, the more I'm thinking I might need it. But you know how it is, like... Do you really, am I really going to do something with this? Or do I just want it just to have it? Like, I got I, I constantly battle that. Like, <laughs> Scotch and Thanks and I, we talk often. And, uh, you know, he's got a couple of the striders off the drops here lately. <laughs> he's like, man, my wife's got to take the internet away from me. It's almost what it is. It's like the temptation is so much. You're like, I don't need it, but I want it and I can own it. So I, that's where I'm at on this knife. Does it have flaws? Oh, yeah. Does it have issues that I would fix? Probably so. Will I change stuff on it if I got it? Probably so. Do I need another project knife? I do not. Is this a project knife as is? Not really. It's You could definitely use it. This is 154CM. And Doug is trying to sell this. Uh, so, or I said he was going to sell this. I don't know if... To, I'm not even directly talking to Doug about this particular thing other than would he sell it and what he sell it to me for. And I'm tempted to buy it. I really am. But and when I show you the reveal at the very end of this one, or maybe I'll do another video at the end of that, you'll understand why I really can't right now, even though I really want to buy this knife. <clears throat> but it's a sick knife. And for what he's asking for, it, I think um, more than reasonable. So in the comments, it'd be like five door or something or other. That's Doug. So I, he's on Instagram uh, and in the YouTube content uh, comments. So if y'all are interested in this Zermano, let Doug know. And then if nothing else, I'll get you in contact with him or let me know either way. I'll let you, I'll let you know, get in contact with him. Uh, chunky little guy. The one things that I will say about this one is this top scale is a one eighth and this com combination of the liner plus the uh, carbon fiber is three sixteenths on the side. So you do have that dissimilarity in your thicknesses. Let's see, let's see, I'll put my hand back here. So I don't know if you can tell that or not in this video, but there is definitely thicker on the carbon fiber side versus the uh, uh, titanium side. And what it does essentially is on this back side, it gives you more room to get in here behind the thumb stud to flick it. So that that I like that deployment method. And on the front side, you're kind of hitting the top of the thumb stud and flipping it out that way. And to me, the thumb studs are perfect aggression and everything like that, like the, the step. But we all have like different calluses in our hands and that sort of thing. You know, me working with tools a lot and a lot of my hands, like, you know, you're going to have a different feel for the hands, like welding and all that stuff. Like <clears throat> my hands are less sensitive than some people's about that sort of thing. So... 
interested in that life knife let me or doug know that you are and we'll try to connect it and make that happen I'm trying to go fast guys there's a lot of stuff to cover on this one i'm sorry it's been an epic week like i already said super epic week <clears throat> so brother mateo y'all know if you don't embalmed jerky so brother mateo got me one of these forest tanks with the carbon fiber or the uh, suede whatever the hell you call it back what do they call that to wipe the glasses with i don't know whatever you call it he sent me one of these as a gift so thank you forrest and thank you mateo i'm assuming that y'all worked it out uh and he wanted he's offered a couple of times and, I, and this i guess i've got curious finally the evo 3.0 uh i wanted to check one out i wanted to have a little more time with one and you know he was actually debating on selling this for another knife which i don't think he's going to but he he, he would he had thought about it so like i was like you know we'll do it before you get rid of it. i wouldn't mind checking it out uh so he let me borrow this. And he also sent Hot Rod a bunch of jerky too. So thanks again, brother. Really honestly, man, can't thank you enough. <clears throat> and uh, I'll give you more thoughts on the on the 3.0. Like I'm gonna touch on the ones that have been loaned in this week because there's so much going on. I gotta get to the, everything and then well, I'll, I'll circle back around and get this stuff on another week or something like that. <clears throat> um, brother JD, I'd already sent, he'd already had the, the towel. I think this is Kung Wu Tao. Uh, I think this is a two hundred dollars knife, which is very impressive for two hundred dollars. And we like to send stuff back and forth. And between JD and I, like he knows that I don't necessarily want to buy the stuff he sends, and he and I know that he is not necessarily going to buy the stuff that I send. We just like to check each other's stuff out, and that's what I think is kind of cool. Is like that's kind of what I missed on the AZ Knife Group. Like the the meetup was this weekend. It was uh, yesterday. And uh, I hope y'all had a great time. And happy birthday, Eona's Edge. I know it's your birthday today, too. Um, if you see this, I doubt you will. But, um, uh, you know, that's what I miss about going to that meetup is I get to experience a lot of nice that, for lack of a better term, I would never shell out my own coin for, but I still get the experience. And the experience is worth it for me. So, JD also sent uh, this, I don't remember the name of it. I think Hedgehog, maybe? Um, QSP. Wait a minute. He got some notes over here somewhere. Yes, the QSP Hedgehog. Uh, and this is a slip joint. And I guess this is his favorite slip joint. So he wanted to send it along. You know, I'm still in that hole. I played with slip joints a little bit. I, I don't think they're really for me. Like, I could see the draw to it. And I'm not saying I'm never going to get into slip joints. It's just right now I'm, I'm, I'm more focused on other things, I guess I would say. So he also sent around this. Uh, it's a front flipper, which I suck at. So, oh, holy shit, I got it on camera, too. Uh, what's this pet petrified fish scholar I think is what he said um, so there's another one to check out but once again these are not like nice that I would buy but they're fucking cool shit to check out I dig I dig when people send me stuff like that that like off the radar that I would never check out it's cool as hell like the, the, especially this this towel well I'll get into details with it but there's so many small milling in this this is very attention to detail kind of fun apart <clears throat> uh okay keep going on the loners um my bro steve claire <laughs> like uh i guess i inspired him to go to, to, to adventure into bigger knives but he's been so kind to, to me and the channel like and um I, i'll get into some of that stuff in a minute but like, anyway he just he's gonna send he sent some stuff in and this all hit last night so i'm just gonna touch this stuff i gotta get his notes because i don't even know what some of this stuff is well, let's just start right here. <clears throat> so this is the attention to detail large M MK1. This one is on bearings. This one's got the hand carved handles. Look at that. It's just a gorgeous knife. Gorgeous knife. And I'm gonna do videos on all these. These deserve independent videos because I definitely wanna spend more time with all these. Uh, beautiful knife, absolutely beautiful. Um, here's another one. And so the, hey Billy, you got the RSK mini Paragon. Here's the real Paragon, bro. Look at this thing, man. Look at this beast, dude. This thing is huge. And I got to show you by comparison. So let me get, hang on. I'm going to grab a saw too real quick. This will show you things in context, okay? Here's a saw too. And there's a Paragon. So you can see the handle's smaller, like width-wise, but it's longer. And then the blade's way, way, way taller. And uh, not so much in the thickness. So the thickness is probably where this one's weaker, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I like a thicker, longer knife. There's a couple of bruises I got that are on the thin side. And generally, I like the, the the width to be bigger too. But, oh, what a sick knife this is. I can't wait to spend more time with all these. But both those twos are, are by themselves are bangers, right? Like, they're they're absolutely cream of the crop kind of 
sick knives. I don't know which one to show you next. I'll show you. <laughs> Steve, you're crazy for sending all this stuff, man, but I do appreciate it. And I'm talking about Steve Claire, not Scotch and Thanks, Steve. So there's no twist in y'all going to hit Scotch and Things up thinking he's selling something. He's not. And and Steve Claire is not selling any of this stuff either. This is exactly his favorite knife in his whole collection. This is the Eric Luther. Let me get it right here. Warnot Medium. Look at that bad motherfucker. Holy shit, this thing is sick, dude. This is absolutely sick. Like, these are once-in-a-lifetime opportunities to handle knives like this. Like, for me, it's the next level up from where I'm at as far as, like, if I was pushing forward, kind of getting to that next level of uh, what, I, what I would get into, like, custom-wise and that sort of thing, this is... This is one notch above me. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. This is kinda like so like I'll go back to Scotch and Things. So Steve and I, Scotch and Things, we we tend to be along the same lines of most of our knives. And you start getting in some of the MSCs that Steve has. And I was kinda out of my comfort zone. I'm getting to where I'm like, oh, I'm getting a little nervous about spending that much money. But we all get comfortable after a while, right? So I know that next level is just lurking right around the corner and I'm trying to hang on to this level and enjoy as much as I can in this level before I eventually will go up i'm sure to this level because after you get exposed to something like this you're like you, you're you're gonna eventually you're gonna talk yourself into it. i'll just sell three of those to pay for this one kind of thing and this is an absolutely sick knife and when steve got this when he messaged me about if have i ever messed with the luther before and i never had even seen one in person before i've seen in pictures but that's it this is an absolutely fantastic knife and i've only spent i don't know uh, 30 minutes with just it maybe and i can already tell you that hands down if i had the opportunity to find one of these and buy one i 100 percent would after what i just got through saying too but okay the last one that was it that's steve claire's favorite knife right okay so uh this one is sergey rogovitz Ro rogovitz which is now a brand called extreme edition or edition edition addiction maybe i don't know and then sr knife works so i don't know which one is going by but he's the custom maker and this is the rhino i had to read it because i'd never heard of this dude before like luther i'd heard of i've never handled one but heard of one this is a whole level of different kind of knife this is what i always wanted the stovepipe to be like this size this beastly if the stovepipe was that big or spider well, no, spider could wouldn't make it but even kingdom armory won't even make one this big this is absolutely a freaking beast. Such a badass knife. Heavy, heavy, really thick copper backspacer because the blade is so thick and so heavy that you have to have that for balance. So like this thing is pretty well, pretty well balanced. I can't really do it for the camera like we're saying, but it's pretty well balanced, right? Because of that heavy backspacer. But oh, the action on this thing, such money. This one has won me. As soon as I, as soon as I got them out of the box and saw this one, I was like, oh, dude, like, I can tell you right now, like, I'd sell three of mine to get one of these easy. Like, this is sick. So, I'm looking at next level stuff right here. Like, this is, this is where I'm heading in the future. And this is made in America. The, it's uh, from what, he, Steve wrote a little history on there, but it's, this is not a CNC knife. And it's supposedly, this one was made in 2017. So, this is made in 2017. God, I hate to see what he's doing now. Oh, he's probably killing it, dude. This thing is insane. Like, I aspire to be this good. I honestly do. I, I honestly aspire to be that good. Um, okay, so this week there's been several tags going around. I'm at 18 minutes. I got, I'll go quick. Uh, there's been several tags going around. So the three, um, was it three sentimental knives? Three sentimental knives. So I'm going to do these kind of sort of in the order of what they kind of happen as far as for me anyhow. Okay. And these are not like family, because I could go, I could go get family knives, like my first custom that I had before I was ten. I could get my Nano, my grandfather's knife that he gave to my dad when my dad killed his first buck. My dad's eighty, so like you're talking about like old, old, old stuff. I could go grab those knives and show you that stuff. But those aren't the things that I look at on a daily basis and think of folks that have done something for me. And that's kind of sort of where my sentimentality on this kind of goes. Okay, <clears throat> so actually, let's do this way. Well, I'm not going to do this in chronological order. I'm just going to do it because I was just... It's smoother transition, I guess. This knife was a knife sent by Steve Clare for me to check out. I'm Upon packing the stuff up to get ready to return it, Steve gifted me this knife. So, Steve Clare ordered this. This is the custom bench made. This is an M4. This is the Crooked River. It's got the, type, it's got the carbon fiber scale, the custom anode work. Uh, I, I'm all gonna guess that's a G10 or 
some sort of plastic composite backspacer, but this is pretty much like uh, top of the line bench made, right? And I didn't have, I don't, I haven't had access lock. Well, I, I have a uh, RSK MK1, whatever, Doug Ritter knife, uh, Hogue. I have one of those that I won from Knife Rights. I literally never use it, never carry it. It's just a memento of I won the Knife Rights, the very first one. And it's that it was cool as hell. So like I, that's a memento for me. It's also sentimental, but not in, it in the same way. It's more of a keepsake, I guess. These are sentimental because uh, hell or high water, these are always staying in the collection. And I always, as soon as I look at this knife, I just take a Steve Clare. Like this just sets the bar high, right? Like this is a sick. And honestly, like, I've never met Steve in person. Like, we don't know each other other than through the internet. So to meet somewhere that, that cool, this is, oh man, it's just, um, it's epic, bro. It's epic. <clears throat> now, while we're talking about epicness, my other buddy, Steve Scotch and Things, Steve, surprised me on my birthday. I did an unboxing on this one. And I am still, every time I carry this, I think about Steve. Like, it's just, it's, you know, it's a, it, this is a sick knife. Like, this is definitely more of my, <laughs> Sorry, uh, this is definitely more of my uh, left pocket carry bruiser. I guess this is not really a bruiser, but left pocket like this is this is the style knife that I like for the left left pocket carry. Uh, this one makes it to the pocket a lot. Like if you watch Instagram, you'll see this one pop up a lot. Like it's a it's one that I really really like. Like that Crick River that Steve gave me is more of an occasional knife. Like I, I enjoy a Chris Reeve more than I enjoy a Benchmade. It's, it takes nothing away from the gifts. I'm just saying for me personally, from a sentimentality version, like. It's hard for me not to grab this knife and think of what a cool friend gave me this knife. Like, it's just badass, right? I I, I can say no more about that. It's just awesome. <clears throat> this one is actually before all these guys. Uh, I got this Crusader Forge. And a, a buddy of mine that I had done a deal with before, I bought a stitch from him. And that's pretty much an internet buddy other than that. Decided he's getting into knife making. And I sent this to him, and it was living with it. it lived at his house for. I just saw him start initially start grinding. I was like, I, "You're the man for the job." Like, I, I want this reground. I don't want to send it to like BGM or one of them other guys. I, don't, I think you're the man for the job because you you know what knives. You like the same kind of knives I do, and you I know you'll do a great job. So Mike Cutty Cuts did a phenomenal job on this reground of this Crusader. It, I, it's honestly exactly what I was looking for when I did it, and between. Me and everybody on the internet, like, uh, we're not, we're not, we don't talk that often. Like, we're not like buddy buddies. And for him to do something like this and gift it to me, like, he, he wouldn't even take a dime for it. Be like, oh, man, the same thing. Like, when I pick this knife up and carry this knife, I think of Mike. Uh, and I, like I said, I don't mind, I don't know Mike that well. And for him to do something like that, freaking awesome. I love this knife community. I've said it a million and a half times, but awesome. Okay, the other tag. Sorry, 23 minutes. I ain't even got to the big reveal, so I might have to do another video of that. As a matter of fact, I will. I'll just do a second video today. So if y'all see the first one and you want to see the second one, it's the big reveal. <clears throat> uh, most carried nice. I think Last Ranger started this one. I think Lefty started the sentimentality. It was 10. He got somehow into three, but who cares? Um, at least that's how I see it in here. Uh, Last Ranger started the most carried kind of thing. Uh, well, obviously, if you've watched this channel at any length of time, you know that I started selling Satu scales. I think I had sold a couple before. Maybe I just, no, I'd made some and gifted them before. I don't think I ever sold any before. This is the first time I sold anything that I've made knife products, which is a kind of step for me, which will transition into the reveal in a minute here, if you watch the next video. Uh, but the most carried, definitely a Satu, always a Satu. Anyhow, like I legit carry one at least two or three times a week, whether you see pictures of it or not, it's with me. I have so many other knives to choose. Like it's hard to like, like cycles through all the other things, but it, it was legit, it's legit in my pocket all the time. Like the name's not just a name. I, I literally carry that knife all the time. The other one is the other one y'all know that I'm super proud of having customized this one and owning this one and owning at, 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 the, at this time of recording two other ones. So I have three total. Uh, Wolves are Mono Tears. Uh, really like this knife. I've turned a couple of people on to them. Uh, I don't think anybody that's gotten one has been like, this knife sucks. I don't want this knife anymore. Like, I, I don't think anybody's said that. Like, I don't know if anybody's even sold theirs after they got one. So Sermona Tear, definitely one that I was like, after I saw Steve's last year, I, I knew I was getting one. It's just a matter of time. And then thirdly, the most carried would be the, the X because y'all know I've worked on the scale. I've carried it and fondled it, uh, made the backspacer from this one. Uh, and I did that short just Monday on it. 
All right, 25 minutes, we're done with this, and I'm gonna do a second video. It's the big reveal for the week. Uh, I can't really do any more than this on one video. Nobody's gonna watch this shit anyhow. All right, stop there. There's gonna be a part two from this week.